Hello, this is Domenico again with Easynomics, and we're going to look at a second solution for addressing negative externalities of production. In the previous video, we looked at a Pagovian tax, uh, an indirect tax on output, uh, pro uh, providing a tax on each unit of output produced by the firm. But carbon taxes, we'll see, is more effective because it gets the firm to focus on the problem. If carbon emissions is the problem, it's not the output that is the issue. It's the carbon that's being released into the atmosphere that's the issue. Thus, the tax should be focused on that problem, in this case, the carbon and the carbon emissions. Carbon emissions were originally proposed back in 1973. And carbon taxes are, are a type of Pagovian tax. Uh, Pagovian taxes are focused on using taxes as a government intervention measure to reduce some type of negative externality. And as we're gonna see, um, carbon taxes are more effective than taxes on output because we're incentivizing the firm to address the problem, but as they focus on the problem, which is the carbon, they can find some pretty creative solutions and lead to better output outcomes and better pricing for society. So that's what we're gonna um, illustrate here. So again, just for practice, Let's get in the habit of um, drawing the negative externality. We have our price, and we're going to use the same example, the market for electricity generated by coal-fired power stations. We're measuring the price of electricity, perhaps the price per kilowatt of electricity generated on the y-axis, the quantity of electricity generated on the x-axis. We have the upward sloping supply curve. We're in the free market, so we're going to label that marginal private costs, the firm employing resources, which are private resources to that firm, and then the demand curve is equal to our marginal private benefit, right? because it's the household that is privately benefiting from their consumption of electricity. And because this is negative production, there's no problem on the consumption side, so it will also be equal to the marginal social benefit. Um, carbon emissions, the burning of coal, creates an additional cost to society, which is reflected um, in this curve. I'm going to ex exaggerate this a little bit, and you'll see why in a moment. And that will be uh, S2, which is equal to our marginal social costs of production. Um, Let's go ahead and illustrate the equilibrium. Here we have the free market equilibrium price and the free market equilibrium quantity. Price in the free market and quantity in the free market. And then at QM in the free market, as I'm showing here, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit. So we want to illustrate the welfare loss in the free market. We just take a, a line straight up from QM and continue, and we'll see that, let's say it's point A, let's say it's point B, and here let's say it's point C. We'll see that point B, the marginal social cost is greater than at point A, the marginal social benefit. I'm touching my demand curves, marginal social benefit. MSC is greater than MSB. That's an overallocation of resources to, to the production and consumption of that particular good. And we can see the welfare loss in this triangular area here. Okay. So society would like less of coal or ex less electricity being generated by coal because of the negative effects of carbon. So social optimum would be achieved where MSC equals MSB, MSC equals MSB at this point. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Again, here we go. Providing the optimal price, P opt, where that price in includes the private and social costs and the optimal quantity at Q opt. Okay, and I'm going to label this P opt one and Q opt two, and you'll see why in just a moment.
So the government decides to intervene and they're gonna apply a carbon tax. Perhaps for each ton of carbon emitted into the atmosphere, um, there will be a tax applied, right? Some amount of money, maybe it's $25 per ton of carbon, $35 per ton of carbon, um, let's just say. And that value, let's say it's <coughs> $25 per ton of carbon. That's what economists, environmentalists, and scientists will try to quantify. They're gonna to try, to, try to quantify what is the social cost of a ton of carbon being released into the atmosphere. Um, and there's a lot of debate about how to calculate it. You know, you can see that there's you know, some potential issues in trying to figure out how to quantify that damage. But let's say that you're able to arrive to a particular value, that one ton of carbon causes, let's say $25 of damage to uh, society. So for the coal-fired power plant, for each ton of carbon that they're releasing to the atmosphere, they have to pay $25. And we know that taxes have the effect of causing the supply curve to shift inward by the amount of that tax. We can also say it's shifted upward by the amount of that tax, okay? So very similar to the Pigovian tax uh, or tax on each unit of output, but there's a slight difference. You've incentivized the firm, right? You're providing incentives to the firm to focus on how, on how to reduce their carbon. Because if they can reduce their carbon emissions, then they will pay less tax and firms trying to reduce their cost of production with tax being an additional cost, if they can achieve lower carbon emissions, they effectively have reduced the amount of tax that they must pay. So the firm might look for creative ways to reduce the, um, their carbon emissions. Uh, perhaps they make some investments. Maybe they start investing in expanding their electricity production to include so solar power. Um, wind power, maybe they're slowly making a transition from generating electricity from coal into renewables. So as they make that transition through those investments, their carbon emissions will go down, thus their tax bill will go down, and that will free up cash for the firm, perhaps in the long run, and as a result, they can thus increase their output and lower price. So the great thing about carbon tax is this. Yes, the supply curve shifts in, to achieve social optimum at point C, where MSC equals MSB, we have the, op the optimal price and the optimal quantity. But as the firm starts to reduce their carbon emissions and pay less tax, it frees up money for them to increase output. So eventually, over time, we might see the supply curve starting to shift out from S2 to, let's say, S3. S3 equal to marginal social cost, okay? So let's go ahead and label a few things and then we'll, we're done graphing it and then we can go ahead and analyze it. All right. Okay. So just a few labels to add and then we're effectively done illustrating this. So MPC, S1, shifts into S2 by the amount of the tax, which is equal to MPC, we will label as MSC1, MPC1, plus, plus the tax, okay? Which is also equal to S1 plus the tax, okay? I don't need all of that. Um, this would be fine, MSC1 equals MPC1 plus tax, that is completely fine. Then we've achieved the optimal price, that's the price paid by consumers, the optimal quantity at Q opt. Now we have S3, and then S3 is equal to MSC1, or actually, actually I'll call it MSC2, and that's gonna be equal to the original MPC curve plus the tax, and it's a lower tax rate causing their supply curve to shift out because the carbon emissions have come down, okay? And that can lead to a lower price for society, which is great news, and an increased level of output, which again, 
is great news. So we go from P opt one to P opt two, and we get more output from Q opt one to Q opt two. And there's a mistake here that shouldn't be two. I'll change that, and that should be Q opt one. Okay, and now I have finished drawing this model. Perhaps I can label this point um, D if I need assistance in my analysis to refer to that particular equilibrium point. Okay, and, and that's it. I mean, again, here you can label this as S1 plus the tax. That's not necessary. I prefer for my students to use MPC1 plus the tax equals to MPC1 plus the tax here. That's fine. Okay, so S1, S2, S3, um, and that's it. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we have graph A, which is the market for electricity generated by coal-fired power stations. On the y-axis, we're measuring the price of electricity generated by uh, the burning of coal, and we have quantity of electricity generated. On the x-axis, we have a downward sloping demand curve, or demand for electricity, equal to D1, equal to the marginal private benefit, of consuming electricity, which is also equal to the marginal social benefit because the household is not creating any negative externality when they consume electricity. We have three upward sloping supply curves labeled S1, S2, S3. S1 is equal to MPC, marginal private costs of production. Um, and we'll start off with the free market equilibrium. So in the free market, where S1 equals D1, or preferably I should state that where MPC equals MPB, it provides a free market price at PM and a free market quantity at QM. But we notice that at QM, the marginal social costs of production are greater than the marginal social benefit, right? We see that between points B and point A. There's an overallocation of resources to the production and consumption of electricity that's drained by generated by burning coal, so society would like less. Thus, social optimum, right? Social optimum would be achieved where MSC equals MSB. That would provide an optimal price, in this case at P opt one, and an optimal, optimal quantity at Q opt one, okay? Gov the government decides to intervene, they apply a carbon tax. So for each unit of carbon that's emitted into the atmosphere, the firm must pay a tax on it. That has the effect of shifting the supply curve from, let's say from S1 to S2, and S2 is equal to the marginal social costs, which is equal to the marginal private cost plus the tax. And I'll label that one. Uh, that raises the price for consumers from PM to P opt one and reduces the quantity from QM to Q opt one. And because of the higher price, the quantity demanded decreases along the demand curve according to the law of demand from point A to point C or from QM to Q opt. But the carbon tax incentivizes the firm to find ways to reduce their carbon emissions because if they can reduce their carbon emissions, they reduce their carbon tax. The carbon tax goes down. So the firm begins to invest in renewable energy, let's say, and they start to transition their generation of electricity away from coal and more towards renewables. Thus, over time, their carbon emission goes down and their carbon tax will go down. Thus, that has the effect of reducing their costs and causes the supply curve to shift out from S2 to S3, okay? So it shifts from S2 to S3, and S3 is again equal to the marginal social costs, equal to the marginal private cost plus the tax. And that achieves a new equilibrium where price now has fallen, good news for the consumer, from P opt one to P opt two, and we get increased output, the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded rises 
from q opt one to q opt two, right? And that's why carbon taxes are typically more effective than per unit taxes on output. We uh, achieve we achieve allocative efficiency. We have incentivized firms to find ways to reduce their carbon emissions. And when they do, they're able to lower the prices, good news for society as a whole, for the consumer in particular, and increase output. And that's it. That is the second solution to address negative externalities. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.